How's it going guys and welcome to another video. In this video I'm going to be talking about a cranking but no start fault that presented in the workshop recently. It came on the back of a tow truck, it was a holding Captiva and in this video I'm going to be explaining the diagnostic process I used to quickly diagnose this particular fault. So stay tuned and let's find out. Okay, so first thing is first on this vehicle, a little bit of a background information on it. Uh, cranking no start fault, which was confirmed. It came on the back of a recovery truck, but when you crank it, you couldn't get the vehicle to start whatsoever. What you could do to get it to start was if you pressed the accelerator a number of times and then held it, the vehicle would then start. If you let your foot off the accelerator, it would cut out straight away. But if you kept it at a certain rev range, you could get this vehicle to run. Although very badly, you could get it to run and continuously run. So with that bit of information that I had, I decided to carry out a power balance test. Now, the fault codes that was on this vehicle, there were numerous of them. Some of them were history codes, but the most relevant ones was misfire on cylinder two, cylinder four, and cylinder six. There was also a vehicle speed fault as well, but when I had that information, I decided I would do what's called a power balance check. For anyone that's not familiar with a power balance check, it's essentially eliminating one cylinder at a time and checking to see what the RPM does on the vehicle. Now, Usually when you do this test, it is to be at idle. The fact that this vehicle can't idle, I'm doing a slightly modified power balance test, but a very useful one to do at the same time. I am using the rev range at a higher and I'm keeping it steady. So I'm putting it up to two and a half, two eight, and I'm keeping the rev range as steady as I can. And then I'm deactivating one cylinder at a time and seeing if the RPM drops. If the RPM drops, that is what you want and that is what you expect to see when you're doing this test. If the RPM stays the same, that cylinder is essentially dead and it's not doing what it should. So I am going to be in certain clips of me carrying out this power balance test. I am using personal view glasses. They aren't very clear in regards to looking at screens, but you do get a good guide as what I'm doing and I talk through a little bit as I'm carrying out the process. So number five dropped off, number six dropped off a little bit. Let's see what number three does. Number three, I suspect this one's gonna drop off massively as well. See that? 
drop off an RPM immediately so we don't need to worry about that click no disable that again now remember this is a test that should be done at idle but this vehicle won't idle so we can still do it if we keep the RPM higher it's not as accurate but it's very easy to tell that there's a dip off if you just hold the pedal steady number two So there's nothing on two, nothing on four, and nothing on six. Number one, I suspect this is gonna, so we've got two, four, and six bank. Yeah. So one, three, and five, noticeable differences, two, four, and six, nothing. So we've lost two, four, and six. That's proved by this power balance check that we've just done and now we'll go and we'll go looking a bit deeper into it disable that and it'll come back up again yeah beautiful so now that you've seen that clip you can see that the power balance tests successfully showed that two four and six were completely dead they weren't doing anything while one three and five successfully dropped the rpm down as we deactivated the test the rpm shot up again and then we could have a, a clear guide as to that bank two four and six is not doing what it should so I now have that information, I wanna go and I wanna do some mechanical checks on this vehicle. I do confirm with my, um, with my software what numbers two, four, and six are, which are the front bank as you pop the bonnet, as you're facing down, numbers two, four, and six are facing you there. A guide for you if you have a V6 and you wanna see which is the cylinder number one. Cylinder number one will be slightly more forward than cylinder two. So if you look down at this uh, particular image, you can see one is further forward, two is a little bit further back, and then they correspond like that, three, four, five, and six in that order. Once I have that information, I decide I wanna get in and I wanna visibly inspect the top side of the engine. I wanna get that rocker cover out of the way and see what it looks like, have a visual to the chain as well, and see if there's any issues in that. When I start to dig a little bit deeper, I can see on the inlet manifold side that numbers two, four, and six have a lot of excessive buildup of that mayonnaise uh, creamy effect on them. Again, giving me a clear indication that it is an issue within and that bank is mechanically a problem. If you look at numbers one, three, and five, they are perfectly clear and there's no issue on that side. As I go deeper and I remove the rocker cover all becomes very apparent on this if you look at the close images that I'm going to show here I'm going to insert multiple videos just showing you how bad the top side of this engine is
So once we had found that, once we had reported that, we spoke to the customer and that was pretty much the end of this diagnostic for now. We have found that there is major issues with this engine. The job has been stopped at that level, but with them quick diagnostic steps that we've done, using the power balance test, we were effectively able to diagnose and look at this vehicle quickly and effectively using these methods. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, I hope you found it useful, if you did please like, share, comment and subscribe and I hope to see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.